Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. Okay, so I'm finally getting around to making the PlayStation 3 controller to Arduino video. Right, so this is all the stuff you need. You need the Bluetooth dongle. Um, you can get them pretty cheap off eBay. That's like less than £5. Pounds. You get Arduino USB host shield. There's a few different types you can get. Um, I don't know if the white one works, but I know this red one works because I was using it on the hoverboard car. So it's got like little bits you can connect up to it as well. Um, yeah, so you need a PlayStation 3 controller. Um, they come in different styles. You can either use a nunchuck one, well, yeah, or a PlayStation, or like a standard two-hand one. Um, you can use the Move controller as well, but I'm not sure like how you set it up and stuff. I think it's a little bit different. Right, so what you need is the library file. So you got to search for USB host, and then that one. Yeah, this is just the first one I clicked on and luckily it's the right one so yep go on that one just go down and download the latest of the latest version there we go once it's completed downloading you don't have to open it wherever it is just you, you gotta know like where it's downloaded to okay so for some reason the menu wasn't coming up but you just go to sketch and then add zip library locate your file and do that and then that'll install the library then so once you got your library installed you want to connect up your playstation 3 controller up to your USB host shield and your USB host shield wants to be plugged into the Arduino and then you can connect it up to the computer you want to be loading up the PS3 USB example from the USB examples folder and then you want to you want to upload this one okay and then once this is uploaded this is going to be pairing the controller with the Arduino USB shield Right, so if we look at the controller now, you can see it's powered on and it is actually connected to the USB shield, which is good. So that's all paired up now. So now we've got to unplug the cable and we have to plug in the Bluetooth adapter instead. Okay, so now we've got the Bluetooth adapter in. All connected up, the PlayStation controller isn't connected and it's still powered off. So we want to load up the next example, which is PS3 BT. So that's in the Bluetooth section of the USB Shield examples folder. So you see this line there? We just want to comment out the bottom line because that's the one that's um, looking for a specific code and then the, to the top one which we just uncommented out. That's the one which just makes it work. I don't think this is the right way to do it but it seems to work every time for me and I haven't had any problems with using it. It doesn't seem to forget the controller and well it, the only thing that might happen is say if you get two controllers connected to it which I, I don't even know if that's possible okay so that's all uploaded all good right so we've got the serial monitor running over the screen and we've got the Bluetooth adapter connected you can see the blue light flashing on it so we'll try and connect the PS3 controller to it and there we go number one connected right so as we press buttons they're gonna get printed out on the serial monitor so press down, 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 down. As you can see, it's, it's printing out pretty fast. Um, the way it's set up, it's not reading the buttons as analog buttons, but it, it can do that. So you get the analog sticks, that's giving you a number from 0 to 255 on each axis. And you can practically do that with every other button as well. Those trigger buttons, all the D-pad buttons, triangle, square, X, whatever. They can all be 0 to 255 pressure sensitive analog buttons. Start and select, I think they're just plain buttons. And same with the PS button. And then you got R3 and L3 when you push the sticks down. So you can see the controller's moving now. That's because it's uh, triggered some sort of thing in the example program to make the vibration motors work. So, you know, if you wanted feedback in your project for when your robot crashes or blows up, you can have the controller to vibrate. So there's there's so many buttons on these controllers. It's it's really like useful for these type of projects where you want to have lots of features. Like, say if you're using a robot that's got forwards and reverse and turning, and, and then it's got a robot arm, and then it's got a camera that you might want to look around, or you might want to have like boost function or different driving styles, that kind of thing. All right. So yeah, it looks like this one's set up, so you can turn it on and off with the PS button. Alright, so we're just going to have a quick look through the code now, and I'll sort of 
just go over a few little things, what you can do with it. Okay, so back to the PS3 BT example. It is quite a, quite a full-on code. Um, this is just because it's covering every single every single function of the controller. I think it's even covering pitch and yeah, there is yeah pitch and roll as well. I don't even know if, I don't know if this temperature thing works. But cool if it does. But uh, anyway, right. So yeah, if you want to like edit any of these functions where it's got if this button is that you know you can just chuck stuff in. So that's just setting it to rumble if triangle gets pressed. So yeah, as I was saying about all them being analog buttons, so you've got get get analog button L2, and then you've got get button click PS. Save a triangle. If we were to use the get analog button on triangle, we'd have a value from 0 to 255 when you press it, depending on how hard you press it. And that's the same with most of the buttons on the controller. Alright, so this is my latest hoverboard serial code. So this is getting tro uh, controlled the navigation controller which is the little one a uh, single one-handed thing I thought it'd be easier for now but I probably will end up using a normal controller with it the things you want to sort of pay attention you got the USB BT PS3 BT so these things are the only things apart from that so you got that bit there these bits here and that's for the controller so all this other stuff that's just for um, that's all hoverboard control stuff and other other things. So we're just going to whiz down to the PlayStation controller section, which is here. So remember when I mentioned earlier about the USB task? Well, this is it. So these are all the buttons that I'm using. So we've got the L1, L2, yeah, the left stick, left and right buttons, up buttons, and the X button. <coughs> so you can see what I've set them up for. So the boost. Um, basically, normally there's a speed restriction on it, so it only goes like say 50%. So you can press the X button, and that'll disable the speed limit while you've got it pressed. It's like a safety function, um, but it's pretty good. So you got the right click and left click, so they're the D-pad buttons. So you see, I'm using a click. Well, I'm not actually using a click. I'm using an analog button, but it works like a click. Okay, yeah, and the left click and the right click bit. That's just for fine adjustment to the steering. Yeah, it's just easy, like, um, so we got left click as an int, and every time it loops around, it updates from the controller to the code, and updates all these ints, and then you can just use them however. They're, they are really, really good, and really easy to use. And I hope you all found this helpful. Um, if you liked the video, don't forget to like, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Okay, thanks for watching.